I usually like to have some kind of theme for each one of these videos, but it's just been too darn hot. So join me with the tasty, cool beverage of your choice close to hand while we take a look at a whole bunch of odds and ends. The last couple weeks have been brutal here. As you know, I live in southern New England in Rhode Island, and it's not supposed to be that hot for that long. The last couple weeks, there were daytime temperatures in the 90s and humidity in the 80s. But you know who loved it? The kids in the plant room. So you know the drill. There's a couple of them lined up over here. It's actually 10 of them lined up over here. Most of them are, are Hoyas, but there's a couple new things. So let's get underway. And the first one up this week is this Hoya Leonensis. Now I've seen it spelled and pronounced a couple different ways. Leoensis, Leonensis. It came to me from my friends at Plants Wake You Up. This was a little thank you cutting. <laughs> oh, look what it's turned into. And it's a cross between Hoya Viola and Hoya Fusco Marginata, which means it should not be named Leoensis because that's not how the naming convention works. But I'm not on that committee and no one asked me. So this showed up as this little leaf and this little leaf. And I thought, well, that's kind of neat. The leaves are kind of pretty. And then it grew and it turned into stuff like that and that which is just beautiful. I mean, that's really, really pretty. And this last week, it put out buds. So it's my hope that by the time this video is edited and posted, well, not by the time it's posted, but by the time it gets ready to be posted, that this is gonna bloom which would be the first time for me, and I'm very excited about it. This one has me a little concerned because, I mean, those are big leaves. Those are really big leaves, and he's going to want room, and, you know, that cute little leaf that was going to make a cute little Hoya, yeah, well, okay, <laughs> it's happened to me a lot. It's like, oh, those are pretty little leaves, and then they grow. This one's been very interesting. It's almost as if the leaves tell the story of its abuse. Whoops, there's more. Okay. Um, some of them are these big, beautiful things like that. And then others are kind of road hard and put up wet. You know, it's like not really great. And then, then, then I've got this and I don't know what happened. And this is, this is done. This is hardened off. Maybe it got dry. I don't know. I, but this is a fun kind of experiment. Uh, the big, beautiful leaves have splashing in them. I mean, just, they're gorgeous. I wish they all looked like that. It's undoubtedly operator error, but, you know, I'm doing what I can. Um, anyway, this is Hoya Leoensis. The next kid up today is Hoya Crassi Petiolata. And I, <laughs> of course, there's a story with this one. When I first got it, um, I thought the leaves are really pretty. And the leaves are, let's see if I can find, there's a good batch of them right there. The leaves are just beautiful. I mean, how can you? Well, that phone's not supposed to be making that noise while I'm doing this. How can you not like those leaves? The 
that's just beautiful. So he hung out a bit, nothing major, nothing, no big deal. Um, but he didn't do anything for a really long time. And then I moved him to pond and self-watering. And it's, I, I like growing in pond. It works really, really well for me. Pond is not the answer to everything. I think what the answer is, is self-watering. That's what makes the difference, that there's a steady supply. Well, let's see if I'm lying. No, there's a steady supply of moisture for the plant. Um, so it, it gets a little bit closer to what it would experience in nature. And this week, this kid is blooming for the first time. And that's just a thing of beauty. I love, you know, part of the reason we grow Hoyas is for the blossoms. Um, and that's, that's just very, very cool. Um, first time bloom, so I'm excited about that. But anyway, this one just hung out for a while and then I moved it to pond and self-watering and it liked that and it just went nuts. And the last couple weeks with all the warm temperatures and humidity, I've got vines. I had to like backtrack this thing out of the plant shelves. <laughs> Getting plants ready for this video was a, was a case of uh, finding a loose vine and saying, okay, who are you? And then tracing it back and grassy petiolata had gone up three more shelves and so. But it's, it's an absolutely beautiful plant. It's growing really well for me. I really like this. Um, they shouldn't be terribly expensive. It's one to look for. I just, oh, yeah. Now I have a Crassy Petiolata splash that I'm going to have to have a stern talking to because it's, it's over a year and it's just sitting in the pot. Uh, I have, I even think I moved it to self-watering and it hasn't, it hasn't produced, it hasn't lived up to expectations. So we're going to have to have a talk with it and see what's going on. But if you don't have one of these, it's definitely worth looking for. It's so pretty. If, you know, if you like that whole Finlay Sony uh, Callistophylla kind of vibe going on, um, yeah, but without the humongous leaves, y y there we go. This is Hoya Crassi Petiolata. still warm out here. I mean, it's 84 degrees on the porch, which would normally be really pleasant, but I've got a light. I've got, it, it's warm. I even got a fan down here trying to take the edge off. So, and I know alcohol is probably not the best solution for cooling down on a warm day, but it's working for me. Now this one's a little update. This is uh, my Hoya Finlay Sony Wide Leaf. And if you remember, it showed up with just a couple of leaves back at the beginning of May. And apparently it likes this setup because it has pushed out that. And that's just beautiful. And, let's see if I can get that lined up. And that's... That's very cool. That's peduncles he here in two months. May, so May, June, halfway through July. So two and a half months. Um, this is a new leaf. This is a new leaf. This is a new leaf. 
this is very, very cool. This probably won't bloom by the time that this video gets posted, but you'll see pictures of it eventually. I'm just really pleased with this. This is Hoya Finlay Sony Wide Leaf. Another quick little update. This is my Hoya Madulidi, and from this came from Gardino Nurseries in Florida. Um, there were four cuttings in the pot when this showed up, and I was very pleased about that. And I think this particular vine was about that tall, and it has. I mean, this is all new growth. Um, this is very cool. The leaves are, let's find a good leaf. The leaves are kind of furry. Um, very plain, but the blossoms are gorgeous. So that's why I got it. The blossoms are supposed to be almost black cherry color, you know, really, really dark, dark purple. It's sometimes known as the black Hoya, but it, it's more purple. Um, but I'm just really pleased that all this new growth, um, nothing else to report yet. It hasn't bloomed for me, but you know, okay, this is very cool. This is Hoya Madulidi. I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a chainsaw running in the background. I've got a neighbor one or two streets over, and I think there's some kind of compensation issue. I th it seems like he just comes home from work and runs his chainsaw. Because, um, you know, it's not like he's building a log cabin. Um, so, if, you, if that's annoying, if that's as annoying to you as it is to me, nothing either one of us can do about it. Now the next update is my Hoya Nickel Sonier New Guinea Ghost. And uh, I'm really happy with this. This is, he's, he looks a little dry. He was in the plant room and I told you, it got warm in there. So I was thinking, oh, he's doing really good, but the pot feels a little light. And then I looked and it's like, oh, there's no water in there. That's an issue. Um, you know the story, this is my second New Guinea ghost. Um, actually, hold on, the first one's right over here. We said kicking things over all the way. So this is the first New Guinea ghost I got. And, you know, there's some stuff on those leaves. Um, I don't know what's going on. Uh, I'm not going to show the tag because I, the vendor's name is on the tag. So there's just, I don't let him play with the others. Um, and that's all this one has done. And, you know, he's in self-watering. There's, there's, there's moisture, there's nutrients in this pot. But this one showed up in December of... This one showed up in December of 2022. And this is all that's been going on. This one showed up, where's his tag? In January of this year, and this is the growth that this one has put out. So sometimes you do get a plant that's just not very robust, um, or something's going on it's not always operator error. Uh, so don't beat yourselves up if sometimes things go awry. This is, um, as I said, I didn't, I didn't get all the hype when I first heard about this plant. 
but I wanted to try it and then I got it and I got the hype this is this is really pretty um, this is just really pretty um, and it's growing like crazy so yeah I'm very happy about this just wanted to keep you updated I think the last time you saw this it was somewhere around here it was kind of new um, There's a couple little growth points in there. Cool. Very cool. This is Hoya Nicholsonier, New Guinea Ghost. Next little guy was a thank you cutting from my friends that I want to get this right rare herbs garden NJ on Etsy um, I've a lot of good plants from them uh, anyway this was a free thank you cutting this is NS500 no NS05055 and it I think it had it took it a while to settle in. You know, I moved it from whatever happy medium it was in. And they usually, rare herbs usually uh, raises stuff in a good mix. So I think I just decided to move it into its longer term pot right away. So far it's only put out three of these leaves. The three topmost. And, but they're pretty. You know, they're just plain green at this point. This one has a tiny little bit of splash, but they're pretty. I, I'm hoping it will like really start chugging along because I like it. Um, so yeah, but it's, it's, it's still with us. Um, it hasn't been promoted to compost. Um, I, there's, oh, <laughs> it's, it's been tough the last couple weeks keeping up with the reservoirs. Um, they, everybody's just been sucking up moisture like crazy. You know, I would water on, on Monday and then think, well, you know, I don't need to, it's, it's Thursday, I don't need to water again. And I would look at some of the indicators and it's like, like oh no, oh no. Um, so I've just been watering and it's been hot in the plant room. Oh Lord, it's been hot in the plant room. So anyway, uh, this one's doing okay. This is NS05055. got a couple of new plants. I keep telling myself I'm not going to buy any more Finlay Sony's. Uh, I have one, just a standard Finlay Sony. That's the one that's just sitting in the corner staring at me. He gets good nutrient mix, he's in pond and self-watering, he's under good lights, and he just kind of stares at me. It's got the same four leaves it's had since it showed up on my doorstep. I am tempted to cut off the top two and try and root them, thinking maybe something would happen or that it might jumpstart the remaining two to put out new growth or something. Especially since you saw that Finlaysonia a wide leaf and, and the, you know, that one did really well and it was doing really well so I did it again. Actually I'm blaming this one on on the people who watch because my intention was to get a plant that I could transfer to pawn and that you could watch me do that to see what goes into taking a plant that just comes from anybody and moving it into pawn and self-watering and I still plan on doing that I just ran out of the self-watering pots so that's not going to be this week it might be next week or you know the, I think they're supposed to arrive Saturday Anyway, this is Hoya Finlay Sony EPC 317. 
And EPC, I believe, stands for, what my notes say, Epiphytica Garden in Thailand. So it's something that they've either discovered uh, or f found or whatever given to them. Anyway, what, what are you? Oh, okay. I, th I thought it had a little spider friend. Anyway, this is very pretty. Nice little bit of splash. And in the week or so that it's been here, there's a new leaf there. And there's a new leaf there. Which leads me to believe that there might be two cuttings in this pot. Um, I don't know. See what you think. I think so. Which seems to be... This is... This also came from Gardino's, or Guardino's, in Florida, and I've ordered from them twice, and each time there were multiple cuttings in the pot. So, I'm um, okay. Um, yeah, points. Anyway, this is really pretty. It seems to have settled in and put out some new growth. I'm almost reluctant to transfer it to pond, but I will do that for y'all so that you can watch that happen. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, this one's been here like two weeks, maybe three. The wide leaf has been here since the beginning of May, and they've done more. That's a peduncle. Oh, goodness. I don't think that was there before. Anyway, that's sorry to get distracted. That's very cool. Um, anyway, these two Finlaysoniers are going great guns. Really happy with them. Um, I, th I think my good old-fashioned Finlaysonian and I need to have a little talk, uh, and uh, maybe something slightly more drastic. So I'm not going to get rid of them, but, you know. But you might need to get cut and rerooted or started or something. But you know, um, I'm expect I have higher expectations now from Finlaysonian. Anyway, this is Hoya Finlaysoni EPC three one seven. guy up is Dyskidia hirsuta, which means the hairy Dyskidia. And literally, uh, this cutting literally arrived today. Um, in fact, I'm still, you know, that fluffy white stuff. It's a batting or quilt fill or fiber loft or whatever it is. Um, picking, still picking that off. And he looks a little dry. Let's see if we can uh, take a look at that and see what's going on. But the leaves, I, I like, sorry, um, I like the skidia. I think they're fun. This one, the one, the samples I have seen have really, really, I mean, they, you don't call it the hairy Dyskidia unless it is. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm excited about this. Uh, this came from, I want to mention their name because they've been good to deal with. This is Plants Are Life, our life shop on Etsy. Um, and this is very cool. I'm, I'm going to have to do a Dyskidia episode for y'all because I have one, two, three, four. I think this is five. I have five or six of them, so that might be kind of interesting. They're Hoya Cousins. Um, you can't, I'm going to have to do some close-up shots because they're, they're fuzzy, but it's difficult. I don't know if, let's see, let's see if that'll catch it. Um, maybe, I don't know. I'll, I'll do some close-up shots for you, but this, this, I'm, this is going to be fun. This is Dyskidia Hirsuta. Next one up, 
I first saw it in a video done by my Hoya Hero, and I thought, that's kind of interesting. Hmm, I'll keep my, I'll put it on my list, I'll keep my eye out for it, and we'll see what happens. And I didn't see it coming up for sale for a, a quite a long time. And then I did see it coming up for sale, and I went like, no, no, I'm not, no, I'm not buying that. That's, you know, I'd like to eat this week. Um, this is a Papua Hoya. And I've been, I haven't been able to find out too much yet. It's a distinct species native to the island of Papua and Papua New Guinea. That it's part of Indonesia and it's part of New Guinea, Papua New Guinea, that's the name. And there are currently three recognized species, Rhoda and Simonson, you know, I, I, I almost wish I had a degree in botany because then I could read that article and it would make far more sense to me. But there are three recognized species. This one came, was sold as Papua Hoya species 01. This is very cool. Um, and li literally arrived today. Let's see if I can get some nice shots of... Sorry if it's banging on the microphone, but... It's very, very neat. It's very furry. The leaves are... You know, spade from the Ace of Spades? Sort of like that, a little bit narrower, and fuzzy. Fuzzy as all get out. Um, oh man, there's that. I have to go in here with tweezers and pick out all that, that fluff. Um, so I, I talked to the seller, which is again, my friends at Plant Our, Plants Are Life, Plants Are Life, Plants Are Life Shop on Etsy. Um, and what she had learned was that they don't necessarily need high humidity. Um, but I bet they would appreciate it. You know, Papua New Guinea, that's, it's a little warm and humid, I would think. So I'm going to see what happens with this. It looks like it's rooted nicely. Um, so I'm going to let it settle in for a few more days, probably a week. And again, I need pots, um, which should be here Saturday. So next week I'll probably transfer this over. But it's really, really pretty. I'm curious to see what happens. If anybody knows more about Papua Hoya species 01, tell me about it in the uh, comments below. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, or if you can direct me toward more information, uh, that would be cool too. This is kind of an experiment. Um, I'm excited about it. And so let's give it a go. This is Papua Hoya, species 01. And my next little adventure in something new and different <clears throat> is this. This is Stephania erecta. And, um, yeah, okay, right, that's why I ordered it, because who wouldn't want to have a plant called that where you get to say, oh, this is my Stephania erecta, and be perfectly logical and straight-faced about it. Anyway, this is, uh, I believe, native to Thailand. It grows from a caudex. i got to try and f see if you can see the sometimes referred to as the potato. Let's see if we can get this. There we go. It'll focus on that. And it sits slightly above the surface of the, of the ground and produces, I'm trying to work with, oh, that's the way to do that, with the lights and let you see the leaves, which are very cool. Uh, and I understand they will get larger, not necessarily these leaves, but they will. 
I think this is a really cool plant. Uh, I don't know, I have almost no experience growing it. Literally, it's only been here a couple of weeks. I, you can buy the caudex that's just the caudex, and I tried that, and that did not go well. Um, and the seller kept saying, you know, said, be patient, be patient. Yeah, I was, I was really patient. They said, really, really well-draining mix. Because the caudex holds moisture, so it, you know, the thing that kills them most is being overwatered. And so, of course, I went the other direction. I don't think mine was successful because it didn't get enough moisture. So this time I ordered one with uh, some sprouts already on it, and I was concerned because it shipped in the middle of all that heat, and it looks like a delicate thing, um, but it's it it survived it survived its travels fairly well, and I haven't repotted it or anything. It's 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 in other than the trellis, you know, it came in that, and I'm leaving it in that for right now. Uh, and the vines were all kind of like balled together. So it sparked right back. It's very cool. It does not want direct sun, as I understand. Um, it only wants to be watered when the soil is dry. So that's what I've been trying to do. The leaves are very pretty. They sort of remind me of nasturtium. And this has put out, I'm going to say this much growth since it arrived. I think it's very cool. I'll keep you posted on how it does, because why wouldn't I? Um, and yeah, I just, it wasn't terribly expensive. I don't think they're terribly rare or anything, but I thought I turned that phone off. Um, but who wouldn't want a plant that you can say is Stephania erecta? I think I went to school with her. Anyway, that's what this is, Stephania erecta. And oddly enough, that last little beep on the phone was somebody asking for a houseplant tour. And a lot of you have asked several times, and you know who you are, New Zealand, and I'm not trying to put you off, but I have a lot of Hoyas. And to sit down and do a tour of all the Hoyas, and I've got a small Hoya collection. It's not, it's not big, it's like 160 different Hoyas. So it's not a huge collection. But to sit down and do one continuous tour of all that um, is a little overwhelming and would take a lot of time. And to be honest with you, you know, I watch YouTube videos like y'all do. And when I see that it's like an hour, hour and 15 minutes, I just go, what? not happening. Yeah, I, I, Wild Fern, I love watching Wild Fern. She's so much fun. She's like, there's no pretense. She's down to earth. She's really cool. Um, but girl, when I see like, you know, an hour and 20 minute video, I just, you know, what happens is I watch like the first 40 minutes and, and then it's like, yeah, I've got stuff to do. And it's not that I don't like you, but you know. Anyway, so I was trying to figure out a way to do it in small chunks so that I'm not bored and you're not bored and, you know, it's not like a marathon. And so I think I've come up with the way I'm going to do the long tour. Uh, and I'm going to do Hoyas first because I've got a bunch of those and I'd, let's, let's get those done and underway. Um, and then we'll fill in with the other house plants because there are far fewer of those. So with luck, 
Next week, we're going to start the Long Hoya Tour. Um, fingers crossed for me, it's going to be tough um, making it work, but we'll give it a try. So, the Long Hoya Tour. And I want to thank you for choosing to spend a little bit of time with me this week's end. Um, remember to give this video a thumbs up, like, subscribe, click on the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Um, a lot of the products that you see me use are available through my Amazon storefront. I get a small commission on the sales, but it doesn't affect your price whatsoever. If you'd like to support the channel financially, you can visit my Buy Me A Coffee page and there's a link in the description below. And thank you to, um, I want to remember this, Life Sucks 235 on Instagram. And uh, I really appreciate that. And enjoy the rest of your week's end.